Prime Minister Imran Khan seeks overseas Pakistanis' help in overcoming water crisis. Imran terms water crisis to be the biggest issue of the country. Prime Minister says failure to build dams to be determined till for future generations. Imran urges Pakistanis in Europe and US to contribute dollar one thousand each. Information Minister Fawad Chaudhary says government and military willing to hold talks with India for regional peace. Chaudhary says military in agreement with government's decision to approach India to improve ties and hold talks. Minister says meeting with the US dignitaries held in positive environment. Federal Minister states Prime Minister Imran believes in a political, not military solution in necessity for Afghan issue. Election Commission rejects Mutahida Majlis e Amal Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman's demand for resignation of Chief Election Commissioner. ECO spokesperson says polling for elect general elections of 2018 carried out in fair and impartial manner. Spokesperson says statements made out of the political interest against spirit of democracy. कि सारा देश सुने जो पाकिस्तान ने की है बगैर वीजा के लोग कतार को साथ जाके दर्शन कर सकते Former Indian cricketer turned politician Navjot Singh Sidhu welcomes Pakistan's decision to open Kartarpur corridor for Sikh pilgrims in November. Sidhu says there can be no bigger happiness than this for the people of Punjab. Former cricketer urges Indian government to reciprocate to Pakistan's gesture. China warns Britain ties at risk after warship mission and report on Hong Kong. China's foreign ministry spokeswoman Hua Chuying urges Britain to stop interfering in China's internal matter. Basketball Hall of Fame class of 2018 gathers for ceremony. This year's class include two-time NBA champion Ray Allen, four-time NBA All-Star Macaron Cheeks. Hollywood stars Burt Reynolds die at 82. Reynolds' personal life sometimes overshadowed his movie. Bollywood actors promote upcoming comedy drama with giant thread roles in Mumbai. Sui Dhaga sheds light on life and struggles of Arastair, who ensures their art of embroidery doesn't die. Chris Pine opens Toronto with Outlaw King, film to release in theaters on November 9. Allahumma ni Rahim, you're watching 92 News HD UK. I am Muhammad Yasser Rizwan, and my name is Faik Mahmood. Starting off with the top story today, Prime Minister Imran Khan said on Friday, fresh water storage was the biggest issue in the country. He sought donations from overseas Pakistanis to help overcome the problem. The Prime Minister asked Pakistanis working in Europe and the United States to contribute a dollar one thousand each. If dams are not to be built, he cited experts as warning the country might face a serious drought in seven years. अगर हमने डैम ना बनाए, पाकिस्तान में खुशकिसाली शुरू हो जाएगी. एक हजार डॉलर आपने अगर आप भेजें, दोनों डैम बनाने के लिए भी पैसा हो जाएगा. In a televised address, the Prime Minister urged overseas Pakistanis to donate funds for the construction of dams. तकरीबन 80 से 90 लाख बेरुने मुल्क पाकिस्तानी हैं। अगर आप सारे ये सोच लें कि 1000 डॉलर आपने 
اس ڈیم کے فنڈ میں اگر آپ بھیجیں ایک ہزار ڈالر تو ہمارے پاس یہ ڈیم بنانے کے بھی دونوں ڈیم بنانے کے لیے بھی پیسہ ہو جائے گا ہمارے پاس ڈالرز بھی آ جائیں گے تاکہ ہمیں کسی سے قرضے نہ مانگنے پڑے خان سیڈ اٹ واز کروشل فار پاکستان ٹو بلڈ ڈیمز جدھر بھی دنیا میں پاکستانی ہیں اور پاکستان میں بھی جس کونے پہ ہیں سارے اپنے مستقبل کے لیے اس ڈیم کے فنڈ کو پیسہ آج سے دینا شروع کریں خان سیڈ واٹر اویلیبلٹی ان دا کنٹری ہیڈ ڈکلائن ڈینجرسلی اگر ہم نے ڈیم نہ بنائے ایکسپرٹ سے کہتے ہیں کہ سات سالوں میں یعنی دو ہزار پچیس میں پاکستان میں خشک سالی شروع ہو جائے گی ہمارے پاس پانی نہیں ہوگا اپنے اناج اگانے کا دا پرائم منسٹر پریز دا چیف جسٹس آف پاکستان فار ٹیکنگ دا انیشیٹو فار واٹ ہی سیڈ واز ا جاب فار دا پولیٹیکل لیڈرشپ چیف جسٹس ثاقب نثار کو داد دیتا ہوں اس چیز پہ کام یہ چیف جسٹس کا نہیں تھا یہ ہماری طرح کے پولیٹیکل لیڈرز کا تھا میں آج چیف جسٹس کے ساتھ مل کے میں نے ان سے بات کر لی ہے ان کا جو فنڈ ہے اس کے ساتھ سی جے اور پرائم منسٹر کا فنڈ اکٹھا ہم کر رہے ہیں انہوں نے اس فنڈ میں اب تک ایک سو اسی کروڑ روپیہ اکٹھا کیا عمران خان وارن دیٹ پاکستان ہیڈ دا کیپیسٹی ٹو اسٹور نو مور دین تھرٹی ڈیز واٹر ریکوائرمنٹ ایز اپوز ٹو ون ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹوینٹی ڈیز گلوبل اسٹینڈرڈ انفارمیشن منسٹر فواد چودھری ہیز سیڈ دیٹ دا گورنمنٹ اینڈ دا ملٹری لیڈرشپ آر ولنگ ٹو ہولڈ ٹاکس ود انڈیا فار ریجنل پیس ان این انٹرویو ٹو بی بی سی اردو دا فیڈرل منسٹر سیڈ دیٹ وائل پاکستان واز ولنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ نارملائزیشن ٹاکس نو پازیٹیو سگنلس ہیڈ بین ریسیوڈ فرام انڈیا Imran Khan has signaled to New Delhi in this regard. Chaudhary said Pakistan will soon open the Kartar Singh border for Sikh pilgrims from India to allow them to visit the Great Gurdwara there without having to obtain a visa, the minister said. As soon as he was elected Prime Minister, Imran invited the Indian cricketers over, he said. In his first speech, the Prime Minister said that we will take two steps forward in response to every step New Delhi takes, Chaudhary said. He said the Prime Minister had also spoken with his Indian country. report. The federal minister said the new government had a fresh approach to foreign policy. All the national institutions are on the same page, he said. Cricketer Navjot Singh Sidhu on Friday welcomed Pakistan's decision to open the Kartarpur corridor for Sikh pilgrims in November. There can be no greater joy, he said, than this for the people of Punjab. I have no words to thank Prime Minister Imran Khan, the former cricketer told the Indian media. सबसे बड़ी बात कि सारा देश सुने जो पाकिस्तान ने की है बगैर वीजा के लोग करतार को साथ जाके दर्शन कर सकें। Sidhu welcomed Pakistan's decision to open the Kartarpur corridor for Sikh pilgrims. The former cricketer, who recently visited Pakistan to attend Prime Minister Imran Khan's oath-taking ceremony, also urged the Indian government to re-cooperate to reciprocate the goodwill gesture by Pakistan. Sidhu said they are ready to open the Kartarpur Sahib corridor in the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Ji. There can be no greater joy than this for the people of the Punjab. <laughs> رات کوئی کوہنور کوئی پخراج اس کا اس کا مطلب مول نہیں چکا سکتے یہ انمول ہے ہمارے لیے ایک دات ہے نیامت ہے امرت کی بوندیں ٹپکی ہیں ہمارے اوپر Referring to an announcement by Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry that Pakistan will soon open the Kartar Singh border for Sikh pilgrims and allow them to visit Gurdwara Darbar Sahib Kartarpur without having to obtain a visa, Sidhu praised the decision. سب سے بڑی بات آج یہ سارا دیش سنیں جو پاکستان نے کی ہے سارا دیش سنے وہ یہ ہے کہ بغیر ویزا کے بغیر ویزا کے لوگ کرتار پور صاحب جا کے درشن کر سکیں گے کیا اس سے بھی بڑی کوئی لیامت پاکستان اس سے بھی بڑی کوئی شروعات کر سکتا ہے میں کہتا ہوں جو بھی نکاراتمک سوچ والے لوگ تھے ان کے منہ پہ ڈھکن لگا دیا ہے ان کے منہ پہ کرارا تماچا ہے The cricketer went on to say, I plead to the Indian Prime Minister and External Affairs Ministry that if they have made an effort, you should also make an effort. This is the message from Pakistan. Don't think that anyone can oppose this noble gesture.
The Election Commission of Pakistan has rejected Molana Fazlur Rahman's demand for the resignation of the Chief Election Commissioner over his failure to hold fair polls. A spokesperson for the ECP said issuing such statements without any proof was unacceptable. The Election Commission of Pakistan has rejected Fuzzle's demand for resignation of the Chief Election Commissioner. A spokesperson for the Commission said issuing statements raising doubts about the transparency of election was unacceptable. He said polling for the 2018 general elections had been held in a fair and impartial manner. The spokesperson also said that such statements motivated by political consideration were not in the spirit of democracy. Such claims, he said, showed disrespect for the mandate of the people. The spokesman said any complaint with regard to elections could be taken into the election tribunal form especially for the purpose. The spokesperson said that maligning of national institutions for political ends should stop forthwith. The ECP, he said, cannot be pressured or browbeaten. The Sindh governor has opened the governor's house doors to the citizens. The citizens are now permitted to walk in its lawns gardens to enter the historic building. A large number of people visited the governor's house on Friday. These included students from a local school. The governor's house in Karachi has opened its door to ordinary citizens. The first batch visited the historic building on Friday. Those taking a leisurely walk in the lawns praised the same governor for the initiative. They said so far they had only seen the building from outside. We have seen many things here and the people who use 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 the governor Sin. Today we have seen the TV and it's been a while but today we have come here and it's been a while and it's been a while. The governor Imran Ismail said the opening was a part of the chain his party had promised the people and was committed to deliver. You will see it in the future. And these are all the public places, these parks, the governor house. इसको इंशाल्लाह हम कोशिश हमारी है कि पब्लिक की यूटिलिटी में यूज में ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा हैं और यहाँ पर आप सब से गुजारिश है कि भरपूर इस साल इसके अंदर The lawns and designated parts of the building will be accessible to citizens between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. from Monday to Friday. On Sundays, citizens will also be able to visit the premises between 4:30 p.m. and 6:30 p.m. Prosecution witness Wajid Zia told the court hearing that Al Azizia Steel Mills reference against the former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. He had not written a letter to the Saudi government to verify the information provided by Hussein Nawaz, nor he said he had confirmed the registration number of the company that the latter had provided. The hearing was adjourned until Monday. The Accountability Court resumed hearing of the Alzizia Steel Mills corruption reference against former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on Friday. Advocate Khwaja Haris Ahmad resumed his cross-examination of Wajid Zia. As the hearing went underway, Zia read from the mutual legal assistance documents from Volume 10 of the Panama League's GIT's report. The witness said that according to the documents, the Hill Metal establishment was a steel factory. He said Nawaz's son Hussain had appeared before the joint investigation team on June 3. Zia said he had not written a letter to the Saudi government to verify the information provided by Hussein. He had also not confirmed the registration number of the company that the letter had provided. The witness said some of the documents provided by Hussein were in Arabic. Haris asked if Zia knew the language. The letter responded in affirmative. Zia said it was important to ascertain whether Hill Metal Establishment was a sole propertyship or a partnership. He said this question was not specifically included in the MLA. The judge told of some PMLN leaders for talking during the hearing. An accountability court on Friday fixed the corruption reference against former Premier Yusuf Raza Gilani and issued summons to him and six other suspects. The court will hear the case filed by National Accountability Bureau on September 26th. According to NAB, reference had been filed after concluding investigation against former Premier Gilani and others. The National Exchequer suffered a loss of 128 million rupees owing to the actions of the accused. The NAB notification further said. 
Accountability Court Judge Arshad Malik fixed the case for hearing and ordered Gilani to appear before the court on September 26. NAB in its notification had said that former Information Technology Secretary, former Public Information Officer and Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority Chairman Salim Beg, Hassan Shekhu, Hanif and Riaz are co-accused in the case. A day earlier, Neb Rawalpindi filed a reference against the former premier over the misuse of authority. According to Neb, the accused ran an illegal marketing campaign for Universal Services Fund. Another corruption reference against Gilani pertaining to Trade Development Authority of Pakistan is also under process. It is the 13th death anniversary of the writer Ashfaq Ahmed, who for decades entertained and inspired millions of people. His radio play Talkeen Shah started in 1962 and continued for decades. His Ek Mohabbat So Afsane changed the way Pakistanis perceive television dramas. Ashfaq Ahmed inclined towards Sufism. His show Zavia was food for thought for many. The transcript would later be published in the book form. His landmark short story Gadaria lamented the intolerance of others in the wake of the partition. <laughs> Happy Hamla Avar, Happy Mahafas, Happy Sapkuch. Hud Kuza, Hud Kuza Gar, Hud Gile Kuza. Ashwak Ahmed stood for enlightenment and was a great campaigner for philanthropy. More news stories lined up right after a short break. Stay with us. Dozens of Russians, Algorics and Britons are said to have their assets seized in the wake of Salisbury revelations. A Whitehall source said the National Crime Agency could target more than 100 foreigners with unexplained wealth orders in the coming months. The majority are understood to be Russian. Police were given new powers at the start of this year to apply for the orders against foreigners in the UK suspected of having links to corruption or organized crime abroad. The orders require suspects to prove to the courts how property and assets held in the UK were funded. One in seven National Health Service hospital operators are being cancelled just before they are due to take place, often because of a lack of bed, staff or operating theatres, research has revealed. Of 26,171 procedures due to take place during the last week of March this year, 3,724 were called off at or close to the time they were due to occur, according to the findings which are based on the experience of patients at the 90% of NHS hospitals, according to the UK. The results prompted fresh warnings that the delays were leading to patients suffering pain and distress when they had to wait longer than expected for their surgery and that the NHS was seriously short of the resources it needed to function properly. The United Kingdom might raise the legal hour for marriage from 16 to 18 after an investigative report revealed that many teenage girls in the country have been forced to marry abroad, raped and impregnant before returning home. British newspaper The Times reported crimes numerous girls had faced in abusive forced relationships. According to the August report, the Home Office has received dozens of reports of victims or suspected victims who were forced by family to sponsor visas for foreign spouses under such circumstances. The report revealed that nearly half of the visas were approved. British Airways was forced to apologize after the credit card details of hundreds of thousands of its customers were stolen over a two-week period in the worst ever attack on its website and app. The airline discovered on Wednesday that bookings made between August 21 and September 5 had been infiltrated in a very sophisticated malicious criminal attack. BA chairman and chief executive Alex Cruz said it immediately contacted customers when the extent of the breach became clear. Around 380,000 card payments were compromised, the airline said, with hackers obtaining names, street and email addresses, credit card numbers, expiry dates and security codes, sufficient information to steal from accounts. British Airways informed customers affected by the attack on Thursday. Cruz said it advised them to contact their bank or credit card provider and follow their recommended advice. It also took out ads in national newspapers on Friday. 
Boris Johnson, Britain's former foreign secretary, said he had separated from his wife, Marina Wheeler, and the couple will divorce. In a joint statement, Johnson and Wheeler said they separated some time ago and divorce proceedings have started. Johnson is one of the most recognizable figures in British politics thanks to his shock of platinum blonde hair and colorful turn of phrase, attributes that made him a key asset for the Brexit campaign. Britain's Prince Harry and his American wife Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, attended a gala music evening to mark this contrary of the end of the World War I. The one-off concert was an evening of music and reflection in aid of three charities working to support military veterans facing mental health challenges, help for heroes, combat stress and head together, the Royal Foundation's campaign and mental health initiative. Harry, who spent 10 years in British Army and served two tours in Afghanistan, is an active campaigner for the provision of mental health help to people serving in the British military if they need it. Britain, France, Germany, Canada and the United States pledged on Thursday, September 6 to work to disrupt the hostile activities of foreign intelligence networks and called on Russia to disclose its nerve agent program. In a joint statement, the other four countries said they backed Britain's assessment that Russian officers were behind an attack in March on a former Russian spy and his daughter in the English city of Salisbury using nerve agent Novichok. Britain charged two Russians in absentia on Wednesday, September 5 with attempted murder. Madam President, P5 members bear a particular responsibility to uphold global norms and international law all the more so where weapons of mass destruction uh, is concerned. One P5 member has not upheld uh, these important norms. One P5 member has undertaken a pattern of behavior which showed that they tried to murder the Skripals. They played dice with the lives of the people of Salisbury. They work in a parallel universe where the normal rules of international affairs are inverted. This is a direct challenge, Madam President, to the rules-based international system which has kept all of us safe, including Russia, since 1945. In the face of such behaviour, the international community needs to continue to defend the laws, norms and institutions that safeguard our citizens against chemical weapons and safeguard them against the threat of hostile foreign interference. We have full confidence in the British assessment that the two suspects were officers from the Russian Military Intelligence Service, also known as the GRU, and that this operation was almost certainly approved at a senior government level, the statement said, adding that the countries urged Russia to provide full disclosure of its Novichok program. Rather than accept responsibility for its actions, the Russian government has offered only denials and counter accusations anything to deflect attention and distract from its guilt. The Russian denials have followed a familiar script. From Crimea, to MH17, to the Donbass, to the killing of Litvienko. The list goes on and on, and the song is always the same. Russia is somehow never behind these incidents. But no one's buying it. The most recent British action ensures that Russia doesn't get away with this brazen attack. British UN Ambassador Karen Pearce briefed the 15-member UN Security Council on Thursday on the latest developments in the case of the attack on Sergei and Julia Skripal. She said there was clear evidence of Russian state involvement. Moscow has nothing to do with the nerve agent attack in Salisbury. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said, adding that has not provided solid evidence of Moscow's involvement.
Russian citizens identified as Alexander Petrov and Ruslan Boshirov were charged in absentia by Britain on September 5 with trying to murder Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia with a military-grade nerve agent in England. The Kremlin denied that Russia had been in any way involved in the poisoning, describing British accusations that an attack had been approved by senior Russian officials as unacceptable. Yulia Skripal and her father Sergei, a former colonel in the Russian military intelligence, who betrayed dozens of agents to Britain's MI6 Foreign Spy Service, were found unconscious on a public bench in the British city of Salisbury on March 4. China warned Britain ties were at risk unless it took steps to rectify them after a Royal Navy warship sailed close to South China Sea Islands claimed by China. China was infuriated by the HMS Albion, a 22,000-ton amphibious warship sailing near the Paracel Islands last month, calling it a provocation. The Paracels are occupied entirely by China but also claimed by Vietnam and Taiwan. Adding to the tension, in Britain's latest six-monthly report on its former colony Hong Kong, Britain's Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt referred to growing concern about the extent of freedom of speech in Hong Kong, particularly in the context of discussion of independence. He also said Britain did not think independence was a realistic or desirable option. China's Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said such a report was ridiculous and unacceptable and urged Britain to face the reality that Hong Kong was returned to China and stop interfering in China's internal matters. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that he hoped militants in the rebel-held Syrian province of Idlib would have the common sense to lay down their weapons and to surrender. Speaking at talks in Tehran with his Turkish and Iranian counterpart, Putin said there were many civilians in Idlib and that any solution to the situation there should take them into account. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan called for a ceasefire in the rebel-held region of Idlib in northwest Syria and said an anticipated government assault on the insurgent there could result in a massacre. But Russia's President Vladimir Putin said Moscow opposed a truce and Iranian leader Hassan Rouhani said Syria must regain control over all its territory. The three presidents, whose countries are key foreign players in Syria, in Syria's long civil war, were speaking at a summit in Tehran aimed at charting a way to end the conflict. Provocative filmmaker Michael Moore has said that he hoped his new documentary would mark the beginning of the end for the U.S. presidency of Donald Trump. The liberal activist said Fahrenheit 11 by 9, which will get its world premiere at the Toronto Film Festival later on Thursday, was a silent call to what he called a despairing, dispirited public in comments published on his website. Well, I think one of the amazing things that documentaries are doing these days is they're actually affecting change. They're actually changing the course of history. Moore, who won an Oscar in 2003 for his gun violence documentary, Bowling for Columbine, said the new film looks at the reasons why the United States elected the businessman and former reality TV star to the White House in November 2016 and also helps show us the way out. He also called the documentary a story of hope and urged voters to turn out for the November midterm congressional elections. A trailer for the provocative comedic documentary shows television and film clips of school shootings, white nationalist demonstrations, footage of Trump's public speeches, and interviews with ordinary Americans. It has the tagline, this is the movie that will end the insanity. More news stories lined up right after a short break. Stay with us. The world premiere of Netflix Scottish drama Outlaw King opened to Toronto International Film Festival, kicking off 10 days of movies seeking to grab attention in the upcoming Hollywood award season. Chris Pine stars as a 14th century rebel Robert, the Bruce in the action, packed true story of his fight to win back control of his homeland from an English occupying army.
Netflix Inc., which boycotted the Cannes Festival in May because of French rules that required the streaming service to release all its films in French movie theaters, won a rare opening gala slot at Toronto with Outlaw King and will screen seven other movies during the Canadian festival. Outlaw King goes on release in theaters on November 9 before appearing on the streaming service. Burt Reynolds, whose good looks and charm made him one of the Hollywood's most popular actors as he starred in films such as The Villarance and Longest Yard and Smokey and The Bandit in the 1970s and 80s. He died at the age of 82. Reynolds died on Thursday morning at the Jupiter Medical Center in Florida, the Hollywood Reporter said, citing Reynolds' manager Eric Kreitzer. It was strange because John... <clears throat> had seen me, you know, I said, what did you see me in? I mean, was it Navajo Joe or... I named off this reel of dreadful films I've made. And he said, no, I, I saw you on The Tonight Show. And you were in control of four people. And this guy has to be in control. And uh, I said, oh. I never thought I would get a film from The Tonight Show, but I'm thrilled. At the peak of his career, Reynolds was one of the most bankable actors in the film industry, reeling off a series of box office smashes until a career downturn in the mid-1980s. Well, it was about pornography, and I, I'm not a big fan of that. I thought that it was a subject matter that was... You can't get out from under and we were crazy to try to make a film that people were nice and had families and all that. It, they, they didn't. They had, each one of us had a disastrous life. Um, the actors were sensational. I mean, I had never seen any of them before. and. Uh, the director had done a wonderful job in, in finding them and, and said that they've all gone on to have huge careers. Reynolds also won an Emmy for his role in the 1990-1994 TV series Evening Shade. Well, the career high was uh, that I got nominated uh, for that film. <clears throat> and uh, the career low was uh, when I couldn't get a job, and that was uh, not not too long before that. I was having a rough time, and, uh, and then this picture came along, and it changed everything. Reynolds' personal life sometimes overshadowed his movies, including marriages that ended in divorce to actress Loni Anderson and Judy Karen, and romances with Sally Field and Dina Shore, among others. His financial voice and his struggles with prescription pain medication also generated attention. Bollywood actors Varun Dhawan and Anushka Sharma visited various parts of India's entertainment capital, Mumbai, to promote their upcoming film, Suidhaga. Inspired by Indian government's Make in India campaign, the comedy drama film is directed by National Award winner Sharad Khatria and is aimed at promoting the country's indigenous textile industries. Dhawan and Sharma will be seen donning the rules of tailor and embroider. The actors were seen decorating various parts of the city with giant colorful yarn and thread rolls symbolic to the film. Talking about the preparations for the movie, Sharma said that they learned spinning thread and with a lot of patience to handle the delicate machinery and threads. But it was really fun that we go to learn something new, said Sharma. Suidhaga sheds light on the life and struggles of artisans who ensure their art of embroidery doesn't die. It is slated to release on September 28th. New trailer has been released for the Hollywood film Overload. Story of the film revolves around soldiers who not only face opponent forces but various other difficulties. Action horror film will hit the cinemas across the globe on November the 9th.
That's all from the news studios. For more details, you can visit our website 92newshd.tv. Keep watching 92 News.